wide open, and she scored! Welcome to UND Sports Extra. I'm your host, Dan Hammer. On tonight's show, men's basketball coach Brian Jones, women's basketball assistant coach Mallory Bernhardt. We'll tell you about Lenny Antwi and his four-year journey with the men's basketball program and women's hockey, the postseason. Yes, indeed, it's well underway. North Dakota last week beating Ohio State, sweeping them in two games and advancing to the WCHA final faceoff, which North Dakota will host this coming weekend at Ralph Engelstead Arena. Women's hockey coach Brian Adolski is our leadoff man tonight here on Sports Extra. Brian, congratulations. You extend the season and you play at home for another weekend. Yeah, terrific. Uh, great uh, weekend of hockey for us. And uh, historically, to be the first team to host and play in uh, the final faceoff is a big deal for us. What does home ice mean in this type of tournament based on your experience? Well, obviously, uh, it, it means a lot to have our fans in the building. I thought uh, when we played uh, Minnesota uh, you know, earlier, uh, in, in this month that uh, it, it was pretty special. It was a great atmosphere, and it definitely gives our kids a lift, and we're hoping that uh, we can get the same this weekend. Let's take a look at the highlights from your sweep of Ohio State in this best-of-three series. Game one, second period, you're down 2-1 after a couple of Buckeye power play goals, but Andrea Dolan ties the game at two here in the second period. Then in the third period, Sam Hansen shot the flex off a Buckeye stick to Dolan. She flips in the backhander for a 3-2 lead. North Dakota would add two empty netters in the final minute and nine seconds, including Dolan for the hat trick with 27 seconds left in the game. Shelby Amsley Benzie saw her school record consecutive minute shutout streak end, but she was still very good in this game. She got the win, making 21 saves, including this breakaway stop here. And North Dakota grabbed the all-important series opener in this best of three series. Five to two was the final. Let's go to game two, the marathon, Saturday afternoon at the Ralph, midway through the second, off the faceoff win, Sam Hansen fires it home for a 1-0 North Dakota lead. With 39 seconds left in the second period, the Buckeyes will tie it. It'll be Danielle Gagne here in front, sliding the puck to Kayla Sullivan. We were tied at one, and at the point, nobody knew how much more hockey was going to be played. The two teams played, and they played on. In fact, the longest college hockey game in Ralph Engelstead history, but it ends here. Megan Dufault is setting up Amy Menke. That after 103 minutes and 17 seconds of hockey. The game started at 2. I looked at my watch. I believe it was right about 6 o'clock when Menke scored the game-winning goal. 2-1 in triple overtime for the series sweep. So you're home this weekend. You've got Wisconsin in the uh, semifinals of the final faceoff. Four meetings this year with the Badgers. Brian, any patterns that you look at from these four meetings? Well, I thought that, uh, you know, two of the games we were both missing players for uh, four nations in international competition. Uh, last time we played was uh, beginning of December. I think our team's changed a lot since then. Um, so it's, uh, you know, we're going to be definitely feeling each other out again when the puck drops on Saturday. All right, Shelby Amsley Benzie this past week nominated for the Patty Kazmaier Award, the um, most prestigious award in college women's hockey. Reflect on your goaltender a little bit in that award. Oh, I think well-deserved. I don't know if there's been another player who's uh, kind of put a, a team on her back like Shelby has, uh, you know, the second half to get us to where we are and the opportunities that we have. You know, a lot of great players, but uh, supporting cast-wise and everything else. Well, those numbers are impressive for me. As impressive as anything is a 4 0 in chemical engineering. She, My goodness. She's a pretty smart kid. <laughs> that might be the understatement of the year. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I, all year long, even in the second half here, as you've been on this incredible stretch and put yourself back in the playoff picture, the national playoff picture, you've been a little bit hesitant to talk about the pairwise and what might sift out. What's your view on that this week? Oh, I think, uh, you know, it's the same mentality. We just have to, you know, play uh, on Saturday. We got to win Saturday. After that, you know, uh, you could make yourself crazy kind of looking at what needs to happen, what could happen in the math. You know, we got to win two hockey games, and we control our own destiny. We win that, we're in. Uh, we're not going to worry about the other stuff. All right, so uh, Wisconsin, and I take a look at the shots on goal in these four meetings earlier this year, a big advantage to Wisconsin, but is that a factor as you look back on I think when, you, when you're in a one-and-done situation, shots are meaningless. Yeah. Duluth outshot uh, Bemidji. 
uh, by a pretty good margin, and Bemidji comes away winning. Hot goaltender, uh, bounce here, bounce there, special teams. Uh, at the end of the day, that's what really matters. Mm -hmm. All right, Brian, good luck this weekend. Saturday sure. and Sunday at the Ralph. Uh, you in Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Bemidji State, the championship game on Sunday, and the winner gets the automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. And uh, we'll be back next week to talk with you to see how the weekend went and whether we're previewing the NCAA tournament. How's that sound? Sounds great. All see right. you then. Thanks, Brian. We're back with more next. UND Sports Extra on Midco Sports Network is presented by the University of North Dakota. The women's basketball team has clinched a spot in the Big Sky postseason tournament. That tournament will be hosted by the University of Montana that has clinched the regular season championship and the right to host the tournament. UND dropped a pair of games last week on the road, but still clinched a postseason berth. Take a look at highlights from last Thursday night, North Dakota at Northern Arizona. Tough first half offensively for both teams. Surrey Burke with the drive in, but both teams combined for just 40 points. UND down by four and a half. Second half, Makayla Dyer hits for two. Northern Arizona up by two. Then Northern Arizona goes on a 9-2 run, fueled in part by Maddie Austin with a three-pointer, but North Dakota answers back. Watch Surrey Burke in the paint, digging for the basketball. The steal by Zabla. Burke finishes, but North Dakota is down by seven. Grace Sawatsky played well over the weekend. Hits the jumper there. North Dakota gets within five. Maya Lloyd with another double-double in this game. 12 points and 14 rebounds. But then Northern Arizona goes on another mini run. 7-0. Erica Banks, who finished with a double-double at 18 and 10, puts Northern up by 12. UND answers back. Closing late in the regulation. Leah Zabla with the steal and the layup. We go to overtime. Tied at 56. In the first overtime, Erica Banks comes up with the steal and finishes at the other end. Northern Arizona goes up by two, but again, like it did at the end of regulation, North Dakota has an answer at the end of the first overtime. Makayla Dyer driving and scoring. We go to double overtime, tied at 62. In the second overtime, Banks with a strong move over Maya Lloyd, and Northern Arizona goes on to win 72-68 in double overtime and we are joined by Mallory Bernhardt North Dakota assistant coach pinch hitting for the head coach Travis Brewster Mallory thanks for being with us overall reflections of the game in Flagstaff um you know it was one of those tough ones where like you said the first half was kind of a battle we you know offensively neither team really got going in the second half uh you know they came out strong out of the locker room and we kind of had to work our way back uh, the last 10 minutes there, and we battled. Um, we did. We had to work pretty hard to get back in that one, and uh, we had some players step up, hit some big shots mm -hmm. to take us to overtime, take us to double overtime, and unfortunately just weren't able to pull it out. Those are tough when you uh, work so far back from a deficit and then make critical shots at the end of regulation and overtime to get it to double overtime. Yeah, um, it's a situation we obviously don't want to put ourselves in. Um, unfortunately, we have a couple times here. Um, but, you know, we did show a little resiliency in coming back. All right, let's take a look at the highlights from Southern Utah on Saturday night. And this would be a strong start for Southern Utah, jumping out to a 28-9 lead at the beginning of the game. Sydney Taylor for three, Desiree Jackson hitting for a couple of threes. But UND gets back into it thanks to Makayla Dyer. Dyer hits a jumper, then she hits a three. She had 13 in the first half. Finished with a game-high 23 points. UND gets within seven. A lot of points in the paint early in this game. Emily Evers went over the 1,000 career point mark of the game, but Brenna Gates was strong for Southern Utah inside. Team-high 20, game-high nine rebounds. North Dakota trailed by 10 at the half. In the second half, UND rallies again. Kelsey Knox firing away from the near corner. Then Leah Zabla drives and scores. And when Maya Lloyd hit this bucket down low, UND was within five, but Lloyd was held to five points and three rebounds. How about the contributions from freshman guard Grace Swatsky from Monticello. Swatsky with the layup. Then again for two, Swatsky with a queer high 10 points in 22 minutes of play. But Southern Utah would not relinquish the lead as North Dakota tried to rally back. Leah Zabla here, then Dyer again. And then uh, Southern Utah hits a couple of late threes to go on to win in Cedar City on Saturday night. As we take a look at the scoreboard, 73-66 was the final there. All right, Mallory, you're 9-8. and eight. 
You have clinched a spot in the Big Sky postseason tournament. You close out with Northern Colorado on Saturday. You could finish as high as fifth or possibly slip a bit in terms of your seed, depending on what happens, correct? We could, um, and this one is a big game. Obviously, Northern Colorado is playing really well, won their last seven games and by a pretty good margin. Um, so they're a very good hot team coming in. They are. Um, but we know this is big. There's a chance we could play them again in a week. Mm -hmm. You know, we could play them Thursday night again. So um, it's big as far as sending a message, getting our girls back uh, in the win column, um, you know, mentally preparing ourselves for this. All right. Dep uh, despite what happens Saturday in Greeley, you know you're moving on to <laughs> Missoula the week after. Thanks for being with us, Mallory. Yep. Thank you very much. We're back with more next. UND Sports Extra on Midco Sports Network is presented by the University of North Dakota. Welcome back. The North Dakota men's basketball team wraps up the Big Sky Conference portion of its schedule this Saturday at Northern Colorado. Head coach Brian Jones back with us. Coach, good to be back with you again. A couple of road uh, games this past weekend, home games rather, against Northern Arizona and Southern Utah. Your reflections on the weekend as a whole? <laughs> Uh, played well in spurts. Obviously, I thought NAU was just a really quality team. Yeah. Uh, we had our opportunities uh, down the stretch. We needed a big stop, couldn't get it. Uh, but I thought our guys played extremely hard. Then Saturday, I think senior day, uh, tough first half. Three for 21 shooting. We just there, we just we allowed our lack of shot making to affect our energy on the defensive end. Now in the second half, I thought we really battled. But Southern Utah has really played well down the stretch. The, the two, two teams that were in our building this weekend have been playing really good mm -hmm. basketball. So, you know, the uh, quick reflection: it just it's about confidence with our team being able to. Uh, they need to see some good things happen. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, you got to make the best of your luck. All right, let's take a look at some highlights. Northern Arizona last Thursday night at the Betty. What'd you think about your energy level and your execution level early in the early, game? Early, it was great. I mean, I thought we really scored and, and did a lot of great things um, and, and our guys were ready to play they, I knew they would be for this for this opponent mm -hmm. but uh, again what you're gonna see in this game we really did a nice job of sharing the basketball without a doubt Quentin Hooker for three then Hooker drives Nash will follow for the flush and a, again a good start as you made five of your first seven field goal attempts in this game we did I, and to me it was all about attacking the rim as you're seeing here we're playing downhill making the extra pass getting rhythm shots and uh, we only had four turnovers for the game exactly. so I, we did a great job of valuing the basketball but again there's times Craig Shields comes in in the first half I think he scores six straight uh, he's really played well in the minutes he's gotten as a freshman. His, his future is bright. It is. Nice move here, spinning against Akko Koluna and off the glass. As you said, he delivered six straight points for you in the first half. But uh, Koluna himself was a, a tough matchup for you in the first half. He's so skilled. I mean, he's, they say 275. I bet that's a little <laughs> light. But uh, he is skilled. He can shoot it. He can play the power game. He can pass it, as you're seeing him stretching the defense with his ability to shoot. And he's just a tough matchup. Yeah. 13 offensive rebounds for Northern Arizona. That was a factor. It, it was. Too. It was. And that was a big thing I, I forgot to talk about. It's just it's been a thing for us all year. We even got a bigger lineup on the floor, and yeah. it's still about going to get the ball. You got a body on a body, but you still got to go get it. Late first half, you go on a 7 0 run here and take some momentum to the half. We do. We do come out because uh, they built a lead and we got some, some rhythm going before the half, and uh, that's what we needed to close that gap. Off the Jerron Nash hooker in transition, 42 36 at half. Second half, Chris Yonku, the sophomore guard, uh, really started to control this game for he, Northern he Arizona. He's, 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 a, he's probably the probably the best pure point guard in our league because really? he's a pass first guy. He's going to take what he gets. Um, he's really hurt us both games this year from the foul line. As you've seen, he just he plays at his own pace. He's not sped up, um, but he'll score when he needs to score. But also, he's going to dish out assists when he needs to dish out assists. Which he did both uh, things on this night: 24 points, 12 assists. Down by seven, and you cut the deficit here. We do, I and mean, we, we're giving ourselves a chance. And, and, and right there, we just uh, again where we've been good all year is in the open floor. Uh, out of a timeout, this is a play. Try to get Jaron something to the rim, and he executes it well. Uh, so we're just we need a defensive stop. And we need a quality possession on offense. And, and you get that here with Hooker in the three-point play to tough, get within tough six. Tough play right there within six. And, and again, it just that's our four to six 
points, how are we going to be able to shorten that gap and, and, and make a run? But in the final seconds against Yanku, finding his teammates, part of his 12 assist night. As you're seeing, a lot of these are in transition, uh, and we got to be able to get back. Floor balance has been a key for us all year. We, we attack the rim, but you still got to have floor balance on a missed shot or a made shot when we're flat to the baseline. 85-75, the final inning, and Tui making uh, at the time his uh, fourth career start uh, had 15 for you, a strong game. Then we turn your attention to Saturday afternoon. It was senior day as you hosted Southern Utah. Lenny Antwi, Chad Calcaterra, Jerron Nash, and Ryan Salmonson playing their last home conference game here. It was. Obviously, those four young men have been great for our program. Just great people. That's why it's hard to say goodbye to good people and, and, and do things the right way. So that's why we wanted to send them off right. Mm -hmm. And as you're seeing here earlier, <laughs> Tough shooting start. Tough play shooting. There. We're at the rim. Some some are good shots. Some are contested shots. But you still got to be able to make some some open shots. And, and we're competing. But some of these kids are young kids mentally, and they got to understand that you're going to have some off night shooting. You still got to be able to defend, which we did. Even though we didn't make any shots, we were only down a few points. Right. Uh, three of twenty shooting to begin the game, and Southern Utah builds a lead uh, to eleven. It would lead thirteen at the half. Second half. Uh, Quentin Hooker did a good job of keeping you in this game in the second half. He did. The ball was in his hands a lot, and uh, he made a lot of shots for us. But our energy was so much better. We got on the floor. We rebounded and, and got back into the game. But as you're seeing, it looks like you did on Thursday night, him attacking the rim and making some tough shots. Hooker again uh, hitting here and driving into the lane. A career high, 24 points, 10 of 15 field goals for your sophomore guard. But uh, Despite what Quentin Hooker did, uh, Southern Utah remained in control here down the stretch. They did. Uh, they did. And, uh, again, we didn't get many stops. We had to come out and try to pressure a little bit more. To me, it's, you got to keep the ball in front. Sure. And, and, and we didn't do a good job of that. So it's just guarding the dribble. And that's going to be it's going to be big for our, our last two games, too. We've got to be able to do a better job of guarding the basketball. Trey Kennedy for three. But uh, down by 11, you, you make one more run here. Carson Shanks, Eston Tyler, Lenny Antwi as you pull within four in the late stages of the game. You do, again, inside-out basketball, which was a key for us. Uh, and, again, our pressure has been pretty good for us down the stretch. And a uh, big play right here for us. Uh, so down four, we've got to be able to get a stop and, and a quality possession. Mm -hmm. And uh, you get within four, but uh, A.J. Hess has the final answer for Southern Utah with a three-pointer here. And Southern Utah wins 71-65. to 65. What... As you assess this season, Brian, now uh, you're playing Omaha on Tuesday night that close out the season with Northern Colorado on Saturday. What would be the main reflections for you uh, as you look at this season as far as a building block for next year? Well, we got to, I, I think you just got to understand the importance, how the fine line between winning and losing. It's a, it's it's a been possession. A, yeah. It's a possession or two, and that's why you got to be, you got to execute. You got to pay attention to the little things because those little things lead to big things. All right. Sounds good. Good luck in your two games coming up this week. We'll see you back here next week on the show. We're back with more here on UND Sports Extra. UND Sports Extra on Midco Sports Network is presented by the University of North Dakota. Of the four seniors on this year's UND men's basketball team, Lenny Antwi is the only player that's been here from start to finish four years at UND, and he's well-deserved the tag team player. Greg Ankers has his journey. When you think of hard work and dedication to the UND men's basketball program, the first name you should think of is Lenny Antwi. What I appreciate, truly appreciate about Lenny, every day in practice, he does things the right way. He goes hard in every drill. Even though we do a lot of the same drills every day, he goes as hard as he can. And he's just been a, he's a, he's a great teacher for young kids just to stay the course and do your job every day regardless of what's, your minutes are here or not there. But he's had a great senior year for us. He's really played well. Nice job by Antwi. I would say Lenny gives us all every day, no matter what he's going through or how he feels. He comes to every practice and he brings it every time, and that helps us, the team out and uh, pushes everybody. Antwi is the lone senior on this year's team that has been with the program for each of the past four years. His career is highlighted with the more recent Big Sky tournament tilts, but his time also goes back to the great transition when UND won its second of back-to-back -back Great West championships 
during his freshman season. It was a great experience, first of all, just going from the great west to the big sky, you know, and as far as just maturing, I've learned a lot from the guys that were here before me, you know, from like Jamal Webb, Aaron Anderson, just the work ethic they had, you know, it just imposed on me and it just kept, kept me motivated. Antwi's career is comprised of 114 games played, yet he's only started six times in that span. The reserve role and sparking his team off the bench is something the 6'1 guard has learned to relish over time. The way I seen it was coaches, what they seen out of me was my strengths coming off the bench, you know, because for my past school I've always started, but when I came here I came off the bench, but it was something I had to adjust to and I actually got comfortable with it. So it, it didn't really bother me, so, you know, just it was an advantage to me. That's the player he's always been and may always be if his career continues after North Dakota. It's a mystery, but I would really love to you know, keep playing basketball. You know, it's one of my dreams to just play professional basketball. Hopefully, I don't know, it might be back home in Canada, it might be overseas, but hopefully just being happy with my family and just playing basketball. Antwi played his final home game earlier tonight when North Dakota hosted Omaha. We're back with some final thoughts next. UND Sports Extra on Midco Sports Network is presented by the University of North Dakota. Coming up next week, we'll recap North Dakota women's hockey as it hosts the WCHA final faceoff, UND gunning for a spot in the national tournament. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for North Dakota Hockey with Dave Axel.